When a venture capitalist investor is serious and ready to provide funding for your company, they will send you a document that is known as a term sheet. This is the foundational document of any VC fundraising because it includes the most critical information relevant to the offer and sets the tone for all subsequent negotiations. So in this video, we're going to dive into all the elements of a term sheet, including pricing terms like amount, valuation, and option pool considerations, economic rights for the investor, like various preferences and protections they receive, and control rights, including things like seats on the board of directors. Let's dive in. Pricing terms. The term sheet will include the investor's proposed pre-money valuation how much the company was worth before the investment, or the proposed post-money valuation, how much the company is worth after the new investment, the total amount to be invested in the round, the target size of the available option pool, and how the increase will be calculated. Wait, what? Yeah, we haven't mentioned the option pool yet. So here's a quick explanation. Option pools also known as employee stock option pools or ESOPs. This is the pool of shares set aside by a company's founders to distribute at a later date to employees as they are hired into the company. This pool of shares typically grows as a company grows. More shares are usually added to the pool at the time of an investment. Here's why they exist and why it makes sense for both founders and investors to have them. Investors know that one of the ways your company will be able to attract and retain the best talent is to offer your employees equity or actual shares or the right to purchase shares in your company. So investors will want to make sure as a condition of their investment that you are creating enough shares to accommodate the new hires you will need to make as well as taking care of existing employees who should receive additional equity. Otherwise, you won't attract and retain the right people which would seriously affect your company's ability to reach its potential, which would seriously lower the chances of the investor making money from your business. Here's an important nuance about option pools. Investors typically require the option pool increase to occur on a pre-money basis because investors don't want their ownership percentage to be diluted by increases to the size of the pool. So that's why investors include this detail. Back to the term sheet economic rights. The term sheet also lays out certain rights for the investor. This includes liquidation preference. This sets the order in which stockholders get paid out in an exit event, such as an M&A, IPO, or liquidation wind down of the company. The first thing that gets paid out is debt, then preferred stock, and then finally common stock. Pro rata rights, also known as participation rights or preemptive rights. This gives the investor the right to invest in future rounds to maintain their current ownership percentage. Anti-dilution protection. In case there is a down run in the future, this lays out the mechanics of how the investor is protected. So what's a down round? If you raise in the future at a lower valuation than what you raised in this round, that's a down round. So this typically happens when overall market conditions worsen and investors scale back on investing, or when the company is in meeting planned milestones or has made a pivot. Control rights. So these are certain conditions that investors include in their term sheets as a condition to their investment. These include a couple of things. Number one, investor board seat. The lead investor will usually take a seat on your company's board of directors. Number two, preferred stockholder veto rights. This details what decisions will require an investor's permission. Number three, right of first refusal and co-sale rights. If a founder decides to sell their stock, then the investor has the right to buy it or sell with them. Number four, drag along rights. An agreement among all preferred stockholders that if a certain percentage of them agree to sell the company to an acquirer, the rest of the stockholders are required to agree as well. The rest are being dragged into the deal by contractual obligation, hence the name. Remember that a term sheet is an offer of investment from a VC. You don't have to accept it. Remember that. So that's an overview of the term sheet. The term sheet, once accepted by a company and when all the legal paperwork is done, changes the company's cap table by bringing in new investors. So let's talk about dilution. When you add new investors to your cap table, that means 
more shares are being created to distribute to those investors. And that means that the shares owned by all your previous investors, all other things being equal, make up a smaller percentage of the overall total shares. That's dilution. It's the watering down of existing ownership when new owners are added. This might almost sound like a bad thing, but it's not. Let's back up for a quick second to the moment you officially started the company, back when you filed paperwork with some government agency to become an official corporation or LLC. At that moment, you owned all of your company. If you had co-founders, as a team, you owned 100% of it. But once you start distributing shares in your company, either to employees to entice them to come work for you, or to investors to entice them to give you money, your ownership of the company starts to get chipped away. And this is okay. I mean, in the beginning, your company isn't worth anything. So 100% of nothing is nothing. By bringing more people onto your cap table, you are greatly increasing the chances of your company growing in value because you're going to need money and employees to grow. And giving up some ownership is a great way to do it. Now, although dilution is good and normal and necessary for growth if you're building a company, it's also really important to understand how it works so you can understand the trade-offs and not give up too much of your company unnecessarily. We did a whole video series called Cap Table 101 that goes into detail on dilution you can find it on Cardo. So how do you deal with dilution? Now, all this said, just because dilution is a necessary part of building a growing company, that doesn't mean you don't care about it at all. And it doesn't mean you just start handing out shares unnecessarily. You still wanna be strategic about it. Here are a few tips to minimize dilution. One, do market research. When it comes to early employees, for example, do research and try to figure out what the market rate is for hiring, say a really experienced engineer to a very early startup. Shameless plug, Carta does have a tool called Carta.com, which uses our unparalleled access to compensation data to provide salary and equity benchmarks for your customers. All in all, do your market research and pay the market rate so you can make a competitive offer and attract the talent that will help you grow your company. At the same time, doing your research means you don't have to pay way more than the market rate. Number two, data trends. When you're negotiating a price deal with a VC firm, arm yourself with market data. So you're operating from a position of strength. And guess what? We also have a tool for that. Carta has a robust data operation that provides all the benchmarks you need for things like median round sizes, valuations, and so much more, broken down by a company stage and industry. If you're in a position to make a better deal, do it. That could mean countering a term sheet with a proposal to reduce the VC's desired ownership as a way to minimize dilution. Along these lines, you also want to pay special attention to the employee equity pool requirements outlined in a term sheet. As mentioned earlier, VCs will typically require that the employee equity pool is increased on a pre-money basis, meaning that it happens before they put their money into your company. Basically, what they're doing is making sure you get diluted and not them. This is very standard and you may have to accept it. But again, if you have a leverage and there is competition among VCs to make a deal with you, you might be able to negotiate this. One way to counter this is to have a detailed hiring plan in place. For example, if you know that you're only going to hire five employees in the next 18 months and only give them 6% of the company, you can respond to an investor's proposal of a 10% unallocated option pool with a counter proposal that reflects your actual plans. Okay, that was a lot. You've now been through the entire fundraising course and you've learned a bunch of stuff. You learned about pre-seed deal mechanics, dilution, pre-money valuation, post-money valuation, price round, saves, convertible notes, term sheets. You've learned about pitch decks and how to sell your company to investors. And now, hopefully, you feel ready to go start talking to investors. From all of us here at Carta, we just want to say we've been there before, we're founders too, and we really hope that this course was helpful. And of course, if you need help with any of this at all, you're always welcome to use Carta's tools or read more about it on Carta's website. So get out there, start fundraising. We're rooting for you.